so much. May we be seated. Once again, I hope you had a pleasant evening yesterday and uh, the weather was kind to us. This is not normal of Mombasa, but I think we were lucky yesterday. We have a welcoming video from the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions and I will kindly request that we put it on. Welcome to Kenya, undisputedly one of the world's most magical countries. From the plains to the savannah, the iconic melting sunset to the silhouette of the acacia trees. This is Kenya. This land sired African Nobel laureate Wangare Madai and continues to nurture the indomitable world marathon runners. Storms into the history books in Vienna. Kenya has more than 45 national parks, game reserves, animal sanctuaries, and over 100 conservancies. Home to unique and diverse wildlife offering breathtaking safaris. The Maasai Mara, one of the modern wonders of the world, is home to the great wildebeest migration. The great migration of wildebeest across the Mara River is one of the most phenomenal natural spectacles in the world. The sheer sight of the animal herds crossing the crocodile-infested river will leave you with unforgettable memories. With white sandy beaches, sparkling blue ocean waters, and the celebrated Swahili culture, the Kenyan coast is an unforgettable experience. The 4th International Association of Prosecutors and the East Africa Association of Prosecutors Conference is being held here in Mombasa, the country's largest coastal city. Lamu is the oldest. The city of Mombasa was the first port of call when the Portuguese and Arabs first came to East Africa. The Vasco da Gama Pillar and Fort Jesus bear witness to the rich history of this coastal city. Today, Kenya's coast remains a multicultural melting pot, drawing people from all over the world. It is a major commercial hub for regional and international trade. We are more interconnected than ever before. In a digital and globalized world, crime is also evolving. Criminal groups are creating more complex networks that have no boundaries. From terrorism, drug and human trafficking, to cryptocurrency, money laundering, and cross-border environmental crimes. We were facing a situation where every day there was almost a wildlife trafficking case. Uh, so much so in Kenya we had uh, to have a court set up uh, at the airport just to try and fast track the hearing of some of these cases. As prosecutors, just remember, you are the gatekeepers to the criminal justice system. It is not the investigator, it is you. Um, and so the way that you let cases in or don't let cases in or when you let those cases into that system um, it must be done according to a very objective, clinical, forensic approach to these cases. This year's conference is an opportunity for prosecutors from different jurisdictions to network and share experiences, to work together to develop prosecutorial standards that will outpace complex transnational organized crimes. As prosecutors, we will continue to take on challenges and turn them into opportunities. 
Together, we will innovate laws and strengthen the criminal justice system. Together, we will step up on the war on transnational organized crime because our continent deserves better and we can do better. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to the IAP Fourth Regional Conference of Africa in the Indian Ocean and East African Association of Prosecutors Extraordinary General Meeting. The theme of the conference effective mechanisms for responding to emerging crimes and transnational organized crimes in Africa, the country experiences and challenges, reaffirms our commitment to combating emerging and transnational organized crimes. I hope that this conference gives us an opportunity to network, share best practices, develop strategies, and build partnership towards combating emerging and transnational organized crimes. I thank you all for coming, and I encourage you to enjoy the white sandy beaches and rich history and culture that Mombasa has to offer. Karibuni san. Karibuni Mombasa. Karibuni Kenya. For translations, Channel 1 is English, a French is Channel 2, 3 is Portuguese, and 4 is Arabic. Allow me to introduce to you our guest this morning. I know we've got many guests among us, distinguished guests, heads of prosecution authorities, and dignitaries. The DPP will do that, but allow me to introduce the guests this morning for the opening ceremony. So with us is Honorable Justice Stephen Gatembu Kariru, Judge of the Court of Appeal of Kenya. We also have Mr. Twalib Mbarak, the CEO Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission of Kenya. Then we have Sylvester Mwakitalu, Director of Public Prosecutions, Tanzania. He is also the president of the East African Association of Prosecutors. Another round of applause for him. Then we have Satyajit Bolen, Director of Public Prosecution, Mauritius. He's also the vice president. He is also the Vice President of the, East Afri of the International Association of Prosecutors, African Indian Ocean Region. A round of applause for him. And finally, our guest of honor this morning is a friend to the ODPP. He has supported us through our journey. And as the, directorate, as the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, we owe our independence and budget independence to him, none other than the Cabinet Secretary in charge of Treasury, Kenya, Mr. Etani. Before I call on the DPP to give his welcoming remarks, may I say something about the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions? The Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, Kenya, is provided for under the Constitution of Kenya, Article 157. It is provided for as an independent office, and to articulate that independence, the Director of Public Prosecutions has a tenure office, and we also have independence in budgetary allocation to some extent. Initially, we were a directorate in the office of the Attorney General, but after the 2010 uh, Constitution, we became an independent body. Currently, we are in all the 47 counties in the country, and we have eight regions to help the DPP in administering prosecution services. Currently, we have a staff complement of about 1,700 prosecutors and 300 corporate service uh, officers. And in all that, we have 65% women in the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. <laughs> Another notable thing about the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions is that initially we had police officers prosecuting on behalf of the director, but with time, we have managed to replace all police prosecutors and now prosecutions from the lowest court to the highest court is being undertaken 
by professional officers who are lawyers. And that has improved the quality of prosecution services. Finally, in the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, we have tried to progress and uh, uh, in input uh, new technology into the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. We have adhered to some international uh, instruments that are helping us, for example, we are members of the International Association of Prosecutors, African uh, Association of Prosecutors, and East African Association of Prosecutors. We have policies and guidelines that guide us other than the Constitution and the ODPP Act. And as we go along, we'll be talking about some of the policies and guidelines and some of the mechanisms that we have put in place to improve prosecution services. We understand that we are ministers of justice. We also understand that we are custodian of the criminal justice process. And therefore, we have to adhere to the rule of law and we have to protect human rights. And we hope that as we come here today, we all understand that there is internationalization of prosecution services, constitutions, and governance. We therefore cannot run away from international cooperation, regional cooperation, and interagency cooperation. For that reason, we hope that this meeting will be beneficial to us all, not only to make our prosecution services good, but to make the international community free of crime, and whoever commits crime is brought to account. Welcome so much to Mombasa and to Kenya. And with those few remarks, I wish to call upon the DPP Kenya, Mr. Nudin Haji, to come and give his welcoming remarks. Thank you. Honorable Ambassador Kuri Atani, uh, Cabinet Secretary, National Treasury and Planning. Honorable Justice Mr. Stephen Gatembu Kairu, Judge of the Court of Appeal of the Republic of Kenya. Mr. Kennedy Ogeto, Solicitor General of the Republic of Kenya. Twalib Mbarak, CEO, Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission of Kenya. Satyajit Director of Public Prosecutions, Mauritius, IAP Vice President, Africa, Indian Ocean Region. Godfrey Diaboa, uh, Attorney General and Minister of, for Justice of Ghana. Councillor George Sass Gabriel Salib, representing the President of the Africa Prosecution Association from Egypt. Sylvester Mwakitalo, Director of Public Prosecutions, Tanzania, and EAAP President. Mr. Eric Theory, President, Law Society of Kenya. Fellow DPPs, Attorney Generals, and Prosecutor Generals, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Habari asubui. Sabal khair. Bonjour. <laughs> and bom dia. Um, I have uh, the singular honor of welcoming you all to the International Association of Prosecutors, Fourth Regional Conference of Africa and the Indian Ocean, and the East Africa Association of Prosecutors uh, Conference, but also to welcome you to Mombasa, the coastal town of Kenya, Karibuni Sana. I would like to thank the Honorable CS of Finance, Honorable Kuriatani, for gracing this auspicious occasion despite his busy schedule, and for the government's continuous commitment to ensuring that the independence of not only the ODPP but also the other criminal justice institutions are safeguarded. From the offset, allow me to thank the International Association of Prosecutors and the East African Association of Prosecutors for giving us the opportunity to host this conference. It is a pleasure to have you all, and your presence is nothing short of a testament of our commitment to foster international and regional cooperation as prosecution authorities. 
This two-day conference is for distinguished delegates and criminal justice experts to share with each other best practices in strengthening prosecutorial services to achieve excellence in a progressively complex criminal justice environment. The theme of this conference, effective mechanism for responding to emerging crimes and transnational organized crimes in Africa, country experiences and challenges, resonates with our obligation to strengthen cooperation towards preventing and combating transnational organized crimes at the national, regional, continental and international levels. In this regard, I hope we can examine potential avenues for the harmonization of legislation, policies and frameworks towards enhanced regional, continental and international cooperation in the detection, investigation and prosecution of emerging and transnational crimes. We are experiencing complex and rapidly evolving crime landscape as criminal organizations are no longer restricted by territories or borders. Indeed, with the development of technological tools such as blockchain and cryptocurrencies, perpetrators are able to carry out transnational organized crimes with minimal risks of detection. These crimes undermine state authority and sovereignty. They threaten national security and the rule of law and fuel corruption and destabilize sustainable economic, social and political development. Significantly impacting the livelihoods and quality of life of citizens, particularly the poor, women and children. It is thus essential for law enforcement agencies and prosecution services to embrace this new reality in order to effectively combat these complex and serious crimes. This conference therefore provides us with a chance to fully examine some of the most pressing emerging and transnational crimes, such as environmental crimes, money laundering, terrorism, corruption and cyber crimes that affect our respective countries. The increasingly active role that cryptocurrencies, for example, is playing worldwide in commerce and global trade, despite being unregulated in most African countries, has necessitated our focus on this theme. Cryptocurrency has increased the risk of use within our countries for criminal activities due to the anonymity that it provides to its users. With regards to environmental crimes, the current global partners in climate change are increasingly concerning. These crimes which pose a significant threat to biodiversity and significantly contribute to global warming are often given less prominence by criminal justice actors. Despite their significance as a source of financing for transnational organized criminal groups. Money laundering, on the other hand, plays a significant role in concealing the provenance of criminally obtained funds so that they appear legitimate, thus exacerbating corruption, economic, and related crimes. Our approach to tackling these crimes as the ODPP has been to enhance the capacity of our prosecutors through continuous training programs and exchange programs. The objective is to, pro is to provide prosecutors with the requisite skills and knowledge needed for the successful prosecution of emerging and transnational crimes. In addition, with the establishment of a prosecution training institute, 
the first of its kind in Eastern Africa. We hope to enhance the knowledge and skills of prosecutors and criminal justice actors, not only within Kenya, but also within the wider African region. We hope that we can partner with you in this development of, an, of a center of excellence for legal practitioners, especially prosecutors. Additionally, we have recognized that complex crimes require more time to be handled due to the voluminous nature of the evidence to be analyzed and the need for experts and analysts, among other factors. It is for this reason that we have automated our case management to enhance efficiency, accountability, and transparency in discharging our mandate. This system has further been integrated with the judiciary's e-filing system to enhance expeditious disposal of cases. Furthermore, the case management system provides for an avenue to explore data-driven strategies. The data generated facil facilitates the identification of crime partners ac across the country and mapping crime hotspots. This allows interventions such as criminal justice sensitization forums, budget allocation, training and policy formulations, among others. As ODPP Kenya, we appreciate the fundamental roles our partner criminal justice actors play in the fight against transnational crimes. We recognize that crime can neither be addressed in silos nor through disjointed and uncoordinated efforts. This is why we commit to promoting interagency collaboration through cooperation frameworks, such as the multi-agency task teams, and the National Council on the Administration of Justice. These strategies, whilst effective, can be enhanced through strengthened interagency and interstate, regional, continental, and international cooperation. It is my hope that this conference gives us an opportunity to share our experiences and challenges in the prosecution of these crimes to identify gaps in our processes and develop or enhance our strategies towards the successful prosecution of these crimes. It is my belief that as long as we have result-driven prosecution authorities, cognizant of the fundamental human rights and freedoms, and committed to effective and efficient prosecutions within the dictates of the law, we shall undoubtedly stamp out the criminal elements in our midst who are committed to disregarding the rule of law and disrupting the peace and stability of our respective countries. As I finally conclude, and I'm sorry, I, I, I went a bit slow so that uh, the translators can translate. As I finally conclude, I'd like to thank all our experts for your willingness to share your experiences to all the delegates for committing time out of your busy schedules for this conference and finally I acknowledge the role of the government of Kenya INL UNODC AGA and AML THB for their financial and technical support in the realization of this conference I express my deepest gratitude to the IAP, the Secretary General, the Vice President of the IAP Africa region, Mr. Bolel, and the President of the East African Association of Prosecutors for providing a regional and international platform that is dedicated to amplifying cooperation and collaboration amongst prosecutors, legal experts, and other criminal justice actors in safeguarding the rule of law. Once again, I welcome you to Mombasa in Kenya, Karibuni, Kenya. Thank you all and God bless.
Thank you. Um, so we have a few brief remarks that will be made by our guests. Um, and I want to start with Mr. Kevin Higgins, who is the Director, Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs, uh, one of the organizations that has helped us to realize this conference. Cabinet Secretary Kuriyatani, DPP, Madam SPP, Honorable Justice Stephen Katembu Kairu, the Solicitor General of the Republic of Kenya, CEO Mubarak, DPP Satrajit Boalel, DPP Mwakitalu from Tanzania, the Attorney General and Minister for Justice of Ghana, President, Mr. President of the Law Society of Kenya, Sylvie Bertrand, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you and good morning. Uh, first of all, allow me to congratulate the International Association of Prosecutors and the East Africa Association of Prosecutors and the ODPP and the Government of Kenya for organizing this conference uh, in what is still a very difficult time to bring people together. And there are a lot of challenges around getting here, so thank you all for coming. Uh, I will adhere to a diplomatic maxim, which is the five Bs of public speaking, which, is, which are be brief, brother, be brief. Uh, I'm here representing the United States Embassy uh, and the Department of State, and we are proud to be uh, able to assist in the organization of this uh, important conference. We, my bureau, the International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs Bureau at the State Department, supports rule of law programming, accountability programming, transnational organized crime programming across Africa and in East Africa especially. We partner with many of your governments. Um, I saw DRC is here, uh, Tanzania, Somalia, many others. Uh, and if you're unsure, if we partner with you, uh, you can feel free to reach out to us. We are always looking for programming to support uh, efforts to improve the administration of justice and rule of law. Uh, in your countries. As I said, we're happy to support this conference and to partner with UNODC, UNOPS, the government of Kenya, and others to make it possible. And uh, later on today, you'll have a chance to hear from an actual American expert, uh, Ms. Tamika Patterson, who represents the Department of Justice. So I encourage you to uh, get a chance to know her while she's here. And other than that, nothing remains but for me to wish you a, a uh, Pleasant conference and uh, enjoyable stay in Mombasa. Karibuni sana. Thank you, uh, Kevin. I will now call upon Mr. Sylvie Bet Betran. UNODC Deputy Regional Representative, and uh, I hope uh, the remarks will also be brief. Thank you. Can you leave my office and not get the memo about briefness, because I've got seven pages for you. And perhaps, Kevin, maybe we, do, we go across the street and you send the five Bs to our people. Uh, I'm going to do something we do in Kenya, which is I'm going to sit on all of the protocols that you want me to take the memo. Merci, je prends, voilà. Um, I'm going to sit on the protocols that were expressed before us in the effort of making this intervention brief. I want to say I couldn't be more pleased to be in Mombasa. I'm seven years in Kenya. I did most of my work in Mombasa. It's always a great opportunity to be back on the coast. A and certainly uh, this time, all the more important for me. It's probably going to be my last time in Mombasa as I depart for another region. So certainly uh, pleased to be here. Let me first uh, um, thank you and commend you on your commitment to exactly do that, travel during this 
ever-lasting pandemic and joining us uh, uh, and the government of Kenya in, in Nairobi, certainly a, an opportunity, a pleasure for us to support. You will have uh, speakers throughout your conference from, uh, n from our office in uh, Nairobi and, and beyond who will come and share uh, their expertise and, and hopefully enlighten the discussions that you'll be having uh, throughout the day. Now, in keeping with the conference theme, I wanted to just uh, share a little bit of our country partnership experience with you. Uh, Kevin has mentioned some of them. We benefit from the generous support of the US, of the EU, and many other member states to deliver uh, partnership assistance with many of your countries, with many of your offices as well. A and they've done a shopping list for me of all of these things, so I'll try to wrap it up very briefly for you. But I just want to make sure, um, you know, oftentimes the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime were seen as, you know, the, the babysitter of conventions. And, and, and in the field where we work, we're certainly uh, uh, trying to bring those conventions uh, to life and support the member state in operationalizing those convention. And, and I want to talk obviously about the UN Convention Against uh, um, Transnational Organized Crime and the three protocols that are uh, associated to it. Uh, we are the custodian for that. Uh, we have also the three drugs uh, convention. We have the 61, 72, and 71 as well. Uh, and we have the, you know, the, the recommitment to those as well at the special session of the um, General Assembly on the World Drugs Program problem. Uh, we have as well uh, the standard minimum uh, rules uh, for the treatment of prisoner, which we also are the custodian, and we also know them as the Nelson Mandela rules. In last year, actually, last year UNODC launched a strategic vision for Africa. And the strategic vision for Africa was all about how does UNODC really tailor its technical assistance to the needs of Africa. So we heard you. We had a lot of cons consultation with the um, with the civil society, with national partners, with your universities, really to come up with a strategic vision that is very focused on people that enabled us to, uh, uh, to be much more geared towards tackling drug control, transnational organized crime, terrorism, corruption, illicit financial flow, and, and, and really to accelerate the continent's uh, progress towards the Sustainable Development Goal and the African Union's uh, agenda of 2063. So while the convention may be broad in approach, the strategic vision is kind of, it's time to act, and, and how do we go about acting here with the emerging challenges that we have on the continent? The DPP, uh, Aji, did mention many of those new crime type. How are we equipped to deal with those? Uh, you know, we used to see environmental crimes as, you know, the usual, um, you know, tackling the large transnational network, uh, uh, organized crime networks, uh, uh, when it comes to animals, for example. But we know that, for example, the threats of hazardous uh, waste management and illicit trade of waste, uh, of illicit uh, uh, chemicals, is also an issue. So really, it's it's about looking at the tech technological advancement of those networks. How are they doing? What's their new business model? How do we together find the right way to tackle those challenges. Um, I'm speaking, for example, today on behalf of my boss, who is in Vienna at the uh, Crime Con Commission, one of the UNODC's governing body, uh, with many of your uh, principals as well who are in Vienna at this conference. And, and so how do we re-inject ourselves into this commitment that we have to our strategic vision. It's by bringing people like my boss, he's the former head of you know, cyber crime and anti-money laundering in Vienna. So bringing those experts and leaders back to the field and making sure that they, we can contribute with state-of-the-art expertise and we can deliver for you what you need and what you want from us. And there goes the shopping list and I can see uh, DPP Aji looking at me with the with the usual smile, but um, I'm going to say that 
you know, we have a lot of great programs in the region. We cover 13 countries, uh, whether it's on uh, maritime crime, environmental crime, we're looking at, you know, uh, 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 migration patterns. We're really trying to see where can we be of support? Where can we come and support you with your vision, your plans, your frameworks, and, and how can we be the bridge between uh, all of you? Uh, we have, we are a regional office with a regional mandate, and, and that enables us to bring people around the table. Use us for that. When you have a bright idea, use us for that. We've uh, we, we've tried to deliver on this, and really, uh, it's really a pleasure to to be here today. It certainly talks about your commitment. It talks about uh, our commitment as UNODC, but it also talks about the commitment of the very generous development partners that we have helping us uh, from abroad, in the country, in the region, to make this quest for justice that you have uh, a reality. A and I'm gonna stop there before he gets up and tells me to sit down. Um, so, merci beaucoup, merci à tous, obrigada, uh, uh, et bonne semaine. Merci. Uh, thank you, Sylvie. Um, I had to be patient because um, UNODC <laughs> is one of our biggest partners here in Kenya <clears throat> and uh, they really give us a lot of support um, and they have in invested together with the EU um, billions of shillings in ensuring that the legal um, um, sorry the justice sector uh, is, is, is well reformed well funded and um, they really assist us in realizing a lot of our goals which we would not be able without their support. Thank you very much Elvi. I will take this opportunity now to ask Mr. John Edozi from uh, Attorney General's Association to come and say some very brief remarks. Uh, John. Good morning. Um, I will, in interest of time, I will also um, stand on rest on the existing protocols. Um, thank you, um, Office of Director of Public, Public Prosecutions, and uh, all the TPPs present. Um, we are with the Attorney General Alliance of Africa, and um, we support transnational trainings on the continent. Um, we're happy to be here today to support the East Africa Association of Prosecutors. And um, in the interest of time, I just want to wish you a good conference and um, good deliberations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, I will now take... Uh, the opportunity to ask uh, the president of the Law Society of Kenya. Uh, we have the Law Society of Kenya and we have a president who is, uh, uh, I think, here today, Mr. Eric Theory. Please, um, just brief remarks. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to adopt the protocols that have been prior mentioned in an attempt to save on time. I was actually telling uh, my senior and the DPP that uh, it's sort of an oxymoron trying to tell a lawyer to be brief. Uh, before I make my remarks, allow me, because I've been joined by the Vice President of the Law Society, to just ask Ms. Faith to just, Faith Odeambo, Vice President of the Law Society, just wake up and uh, wave to 
to the membership. Thank you so much. Uh, DPP, I want to thank you for finding it fit to invite us to this very, very important uh, conference exploring conventional and really emerging uh, areas of uh, crime, uh, the threat that is posed by transnational organized crimes is a threat that will be felt quite significantly in Africa, Kenya in particular, because of its ability to infiltrate governments that have weak structures, because of its ability to fund and support political activity and compromise the ability of the law enforcement agencies to respond to this challenge. And so it is gratifying to be part of this conference where we will deliberate and explore the strategies that are available for us to be able to develop the competencies and the capabilities of the law enforcement agencies, and not only just the law enforcement agencies, but also of the bar associations. And as a law society, we want to say that we are keen to work with the office of with the DPP and other partners so that we can enhance the capacity of the advocates to be able to respond to the challenges posed by transnational organized crime, given that we continue to operate in an increasingly digitized environment, which then increases uh, the threat and the need to strengthen the legal, institutional, and operational capacity to combat transnational organized crime and to ensure effective international cooperation. It is our view that to be able to achieve these objectives, then there is need for greater collaboration between the law societies and the office of the ODPP and other law enforcement agencies so that we can be able to develop the urgent and dynamic local responses as well as establish the international linkages and responses that we need to and we want to pledge with you, to you as uh, prosecutors that uh, the Law Society is uh, keen to engage in this aspect and look at partners to be able to build our capacity so that we are able to uh, combat uh, this emerging and very um, huge threat to both our local security and the international security. So I want to take this opportunity to once again congratulate you and uh, the Association of Prosecutors for convening us today and to wish each and everyone wonderful deliberations. Asante Nisan. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Theory. I will now ask, um, th there will be a video play. I'm not strictly following the script, but um, there'll be a video from the Crown Prosecution Services, uh, the DPP United Kingdom, who has a message, and that is Mr. Max Hill uh, QC.
greetings to all of my IAP colleagues in Mombasa. I'm delighted to be able to join you today, albeit by video, and I'd like to thank Nordin Haji, the DPP of Kenya, for extending an invitation to me to participate in your event. I'm going to speak about the threat from transnational organised crime from the UK perspective and outline some of the ways in which we are responding to this. The UK government has estimated that serious and organised crime costs the UK at least £37 billion annually. This includes economic crime such as money laundering, fraud, bribery and corruption, as well as cybercrime, smuggling in people, drugs and firearms, and child sexual exploitation. The UK's National Crime Agency believes the majority of serious and organised crime in the UK has an international dimension. Organised criminal groups source illicit commodities, they exploit vulnerable people and they defraud UK citizens and businesses from overseas. And transnational criminals commit crime in the UK and overseas. And as the nature of crime evolves, this international dimension is increasing. In my organisation, the Crown Prosecution Service of England and Wales, more and more of our work involves investigations and prosecutions in multiple jurisdictions or has evidence, suspects, witnesses, victims or assets located outside the UK. This impact is likely to be replicated globally and we are therefore all faced with a challenge in terms of volume, scale and complexity. As criminals find new and more novel ways to commit offences and to hide the proceeds of their crimes, so must we respond to ensure that we have the best frameworks in place and the most effective tools at our disposal to counter the risks posed to our citizens from illegal activity. And whilst our respective legal systems may be different, we can work together to tackle crimes that impact on us all. So what are we doing here at the Crown Prosecution Service? We recently undertook an extensive review of how we tackle these emerging threats. We looked at how we could increase flexibility and build resilience within our processes and structure and how we could better share learning and expertise within our own organisation. As a result of this review, last month we launched our new serious economic, organised crime and international directorate, CSID, S-E-O-C-I-D. Where we previously had separate divisions for our serious economic casework and our international extradition and organised crime casework, CSID brings together staff from across these specialisms into multidisciplinary teams working on the most complex and high priority cases. This approach ensures that every complex case submitted to us by investigators has the right specialist legal expertise from the outset. Within the directorate, our new multidisciplinary teams work closely alongside our established Proceeds of Crime Division, which deals with all restraint and confiscation proceedings. 
we have also created a specialist organised child sexual abuse unit to deal with the most complex, voluminous and high risk child sexual abuse cases. These cases are extremely sensitive and challenging to prosecute and as with other areas of serious organised crime, we are seeing an increase in the volume and complexity of files being submitted to us. The new unit is made up of highly trained legal staff who, alongside their own casework, will provide specialist advice to our local prosecutors. The creation of these new teams are two of the ways in which we are future-proofing our internal approach to the changing nature of crime. Our new structures enable us to be flexible and resilient in our response, and they're built on principles of sharing knowledge and expertise across our organisation. They also recognise the importance of close collaboration and cooperation with you and all of our international partners. We have a network of specialist prosecutors who are deployed overseas in countries of strategic importance to our casework, including in South Africa and Tanzania. The work done by those specialist prosecutors, called liaison prosecutors, is critical in supporting prosecutors in the UK where their cases have an international element. Good communication between prosecutors is essential on specific casework where we can assist each other but also through forums in which knowledge is shared, common problems discussed and solutions identified. The IAP is just one important forum in which that kind of communication can happen. I therefore hope that your conference supports existing networks and provides the opportunity for interesting and useful discussions on identifying effective mechanisms to respond to emerging and transnational organised crime in Africa. Thank you for providing me with this opportunity to speak to you today. I do hope that you enjoy the conference and I look forward to seeing many of you at the IAP AGM in Georgia later this year. Um, thank you. Um, that was Mr. Max Hill uh, QC, who is the deputy, I mean the director of public prosecutions, uh, United Kingdom, or is it England and Wales? Um, the Attorney General of Ghana is on his way, has not yet arrived. So in his state, I've asked His Excellency Khalifa Ahmed Khalifa, the Attorney General of Sudan, to come and say a few words. السلام عليكم صباح الخير أنا أشكر السادة نواب العمومين والمدعين العامين السادة رؤساء الوفود والحضار الكريم من مختلف سمياتهم السلام عليكم في البداية يطيب لي أن أتقدم بخالص الشكر والامتنان للسيد المدعي العام لدولة كينيا لدعوته الكريمة لنا لحضور هذه الفعاليات المهمة ونشكره على كرم الضيافة وحسن الاستقبال 
ثم الشكر أجزله لكل الزملاء من أعضاء النيابة العامة في دول شرق إفريقيا والمحيط الهندي ولكل من ساهم في أن نقف وقفتنا اليوم أمامكم السادة مدعين العامين السادة رؤساء الوفود الحضور الكريم تشكل الجريمة المنظمة عبر الحدود تحديا كبيرا للمجتمع الدولي لما تؤدي إليه من تعطيل للتنمية والاستقرار في المجتمعات الأمر الذي يقتضي النظر في أسبابها ودوافعها فضلا عن تعزيز التنمية المستدامة للدول لا سيما الأقل نموا وفقا لأهداف التنمية مما انعكس إيجابا على مستويات الجريمة بشكل عام والجريمة الوطنية بشكل خاص وصولا لمعرفة تشكيل الشفكات الجرامية ورصدها وتعاقبها ومحكمتها السادة الرسال وفود الحضور الكريم إن التعاون القانوني والقضاء بين الدول الإقليم ودول العالم من الأهمية بمكان تعقم اللجنة احتراما للسيادة وبسط سيادة حكم القانون وتأكيدا لعدم الإفلات من العقاب وتجي مشاركتنا هذه امتدادا لهذا الإرس من التعاون والتوافق والبناء الذي يهدف لخدمة الشعوب السادة المدعين عمومين السادة رؤساء الفوط الحضور الكريم نأكد مشاركتنا حيث صادق السودان على اتفاقيات الدولية والاتفاقية الأمم المتحدة لمكافحة الاتجار غير المشروع بالمخدرات والمؤسرات العقلية في عام 1989 كما صادر أو صادق السودان على قانون مكافحة المخدرات في 1994 وتم تأسيس نيابات مختلفة لمكافحة المخدرات في السودان السادة المدعين السادة رؤساء الوفود نطلع من خلال هذه الفعاليات لمواصلة التعاون القانوني والقضائي في كافة المسائل الجنائية لتؤثر على دول كتقلت التي متعلقة بمكافحة الإرهاب والفساد وحيث أن السودان يتطلع أيضا إلى الانضمام إلى جمعية النواب العموميين لشرق إفريقيا وجمعية النواب العموم للدولية وسنعمل على اتباع الإجراءات المنصوص عليها لتحقيق هذه القاية كما نطلع على إنشاء شبكة لتبادل المعارف والخبرات بين الدول ونطمع في التعرف عن كسب لتجارب الدول في المجالات التي تشمل هذه الفعاليات شكرا جزيلا شكرا Um, I will now call upon Mr. Frederick uh, Bayer, AMLTHB, to come and say very few words, because we are we are we are running uh, out of time and we want to start the the main program. Excellencies, honorable judges, honorable guests, distinguished audience. Thank you very much for giving me the floor, <laughs> dear Nordin. I was not expecting that I, <coughs> I would be very brief. I'm the representative of the European Union Trust Fund, and uh, in, uh, I'm leading a platform, a project covering 32 countries, mainly focused on AML CFT. For the last three years, we have been covering THB, and in the two plus five years to come, we will, we will cover all the illicit financial flows gener generated sorry, by transnational organized crime. I'm very happy to be here 
and uh, to attend uh, this uh, conference. This is the first time that uh, this project is at an institute conference because usually we focus on uh, FIUs because everything starts from FIUs when uh, you use EML CFT tool. And uh, we are working in that direction for the coming years by associating not only the FIUs to the law enforcement, but also to the DPPs, because that's fine to have a nice AML safety tool that's better to investigate, to prosecute, to trial, and to seize or and confiscate all the criminal assets. This is what we are doing for the country. We have partnered with the Directorate of Public Prosecution Kenya. We partner with some other countries. Last week, we were in Mauritius, I've seen here the representative from Mauritius. We are working with the central banks. And uh, also we try to associate all the different stakeholders working in the MLCFT field. We will continue, as I said, for the two plus four or five years to come. And uh, I look for one partnering with the different countries uh, uh, which are in, under my scope. In, fa in fact, to be short, my, the countries under my scope are the ones from SAMLAG, the 20 countries from SAMLAG, the eight or nine countries from GABAC, and the uh, five countries from Merafetaf, from Egypt to, uh, to Djibouti and Somalia. And we are covering from uh, Sao Tome in principle to Seychelles and uh, Sudan to uh, South Africa. Thank you for uh, giving me the floor. I wish you good deliberations. These are very important deliberations because, as you know, MLCFT also finance these kind of criminal activities. And uh, we are also targeting these kind of uh, activities because uh, we organize trainings regarding cyber crime and regarding uh, cyber, cyber corrupt, uh, cryptocurrency, sorry, and virtual assets. Thank you for your attention and uh, have a nice week with uh, in the ends of uh, our guests. Thank you, Taji. Uh, um, I will now want to invite um, Mr. Sylvester Mokitalu, who is the Director of Public Prosecutions Tanzania, and he is also our East African Association uh, of Prosecutors President. Mr. Mokitalu. Honorable Okoya Tan, Cabinet Secretary of the National Treasury and Planning of Kenya, Honorable Justice Stephen Ikayu, Judge of the Court of Appeal of Kenya, Honorable Satyajit Borel, International Association of Pros Prosecutor Vice President, the African Indian Ocean Region, Honorable Twarabu M. Barak, Chief Executive Officer of the Ethics and the Anti-Corruption Corruption, uh, Commission of Kenya, uh, Honorable the Red Justice, Jane Francis Yabod, DPP Uganda, and EAAP Vice President, Honorable Nordin Haj, EAAP Secretary General, and DPP Kenya, Honorable Attorney Generals, DPPs and Prosecutor Generals present, representative of our development partners, my fellow prosecutors, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. It is with great pleasure I take this opportunity to endorse a word of congratulation for the organizers of this significantly important conference. We owe a great debt of gratitude to the Director of Public Prosecution of Kenya and his office for hosting us. Thank you very much, my brother, Nuruddin Haj. This conference is giving us an opportunity to discuss and deliberate on matters of common concern 
between prosecutors from the East African region and our counterparts in the Africa and Indian Ocean region. I sincerely hope that this unique platform and the spirit of cooperation will culminate into more concrete and actionable aspect of cooperation in emerging crimes and transnational organized crime in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, the spike of cross-border crimes has led to devastating effects across the globe. Technological advances and the movement of people and goods have enabled criminals to operate across borders unimpeded. For a long time, law enforcement agencies and the prosecution authorities' efforts remained fragmented and disintegrated. Criminal syndicates have exploited on operational gaps and in coherent working relationship among our, country, our countries. It is against this drop countries in the East African resolved to establish an association of prosecutors to promote and facilitate cooperation between prosecution authorities of member states towards achievement of common objectives, goals, and best practices of preventing and combating all forms of crimes. This result culminated into the establishment of the East African Association of Prosecutors, the EAEP, the founding members being Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, and later on, South Sudan joined this association. The DRC Congo is in the final stage of joining the association. Currently, membership of the EAP has stretched beyond the East African region, whereas our neighboring countries of Mozambique, Marawi, Ethiopia, and Zambia have joined our joint efforts. Just like other regional associations, main the main objective of EAP is to enhance cooperation in the handling of cross-border crimes, provision of mutual legal assistance criminal matters, including the arrest and the repatriation of fugitive offenders. We are also aiming at exchanging of information on a national mechanism for combating criminal activities. Since its inception, EAP has tried to bring the East African region together in the pursuit of peace and security to assisting one another in ending impunity of all kinds. Our efforts have been abridged through the close cooperation we have. The bond we have created has assisted us in collecting evidence of cases that are of great concern within the region and the repatriation of fugitive offenders. Moreover, we have been instrumental in helping one another in ensuring that criminals do not benefit from their ill-gotten wealth by cooperating in tracing freezing and confiscating their assets within the region. Ladies and gentlemen, we have all witnessed mushrooming of, of serious crime with, 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 which affects not only individual countries, but the region as a whole. My brother Nurin Haj mentioned some of the, of, the, of, the, of the crimes, but we have trafficking person and smuggling of migrants, illeg uh, illegal withdrawal trade, drug trafficking, all these crimes uh, poses numerous problems to our, our countries. And therefore, the importance of international cooperation in combating transnational uh, organized crime cannot be overstated. Ladies and gentlemen, as we reaffirm our commitment in discharging the noble goal, we further pledge our unreserved support to other regional associations in fostering joint undertakings, including implementation of key international instruments which aim at combating the scourge of international crimes. I call upon all distinguished guest uh, members attending this conference to work together to foster cooperation, coordination, and collaboration in the fight against emerging crimes and the other transnational crimes. We must take the war to the criminals. Allow me, ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, 
to appreciate the support we are getting from our development partners, you and ODC, INL, and all those who are supporting us. It is something we don't take it rightly. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your kind attention. Sante San. Thank you very much, Ndugu. Um, I will now call upon um, Honorable George Saad, who is uh, representing the African Prosecution Association president from Egypt. Um, as you all know, Egypt is uh, the, the holding the presidency of the African Association of Prosecutors. Thank you. Sayyid Wazir Malay Al-Kini, Sayyid Qadi Al-Istiqnaf Al-Kini, Sayyid Al-Agilla Ashab Al-Ba'ali, Sayyid Al-Nuwab Al-Umum, Ruasa Al-Ufud Al-Musharqa, Sayyidat wa Sayyidat A'adha Al-Niyab Al-Musharikin, والسادة الحضور يشرفني في البداية أن أعرب عن بالغ سعادتي بالمشاركة في هذا المؤتمر الهام الذي يجمع لفيفا من خيرة العقول القانونية التابعة النابغة في قارتنا الأفريقية ومنطقة المحيط الهندي وهي خبرات دائما ما نفتخر بها وبنتاج أعمالها في جميع المحافل الدولية والإقليمية يسعدني أن أنقل إلى حضراتكم تحيات السيد المستشار النائب العام المصري رئيس جمعيتي النواب العام الأفارقة والعرب وأعتذر بالنيابة عنه عن عدم حضوره فعاليات هذا المؤتمر الهام نظرا لظروف العمل التي حالت بينه وبين المشاركة في هذا المؤتمر كما أود أن أتقدم بالشكر والتقدير إلى دولة كينيا الشقيقة ومعالي النائب العام لدولة كينيا على حفاوة الاستقبال والاستضافة فالتعاون الدائم بين شعوبنا في شتى المجالات كان ولا يزال السمة البارزة لعلاقتنا التاريخية أود أن أتقدم أيضا بالشكر إلى جمعية دولية لأعضاء النيابة العامة وجمعية النواب العموم لدول شرق أفريقيا وأعضائها وإلى كافة الجهات الدولية المشاركة والمساهمة في تنظيم هذا المؤتمر على عملهم الدؤوب في مكافحة كافة الظواهر الإجرامية على مختلف صورها والتي من أهم وسائل مكافحتها تنظيم مثل هذه المؤتمرات الإقليمية والتي تهدف إلى دراسة ملامح هذه الظواهر وأسباب وجودها وأطر وكيفية مجابهتها السيدات والسادة الحضور لقد ساهم التطور الذي أصاب تكنولوجيا المعلومات ووسائل الاتصالات وسبل الانتقال من مكان إلى آخر في تطور السلوك الإجرامي بصورة عامة فتخلى المجرمون عن الوسائل التقليدية التي كانوا يتبعونها وعملوا على اتخاذ آليات تكنولوجية حديثة ووسائل اتصال متقدمة سبيلا لتحقيق مآربهم غير المشروعة ومن ثم كان من الضروري دراسة هذه المعطيات الجديدة 
وتغيير المعاملة القانونية لمثل هذه الجرائم على نحو يكفل مكافحتها والقضاء عليها وهو ما لا يتأتى إلا بالتدريب المستمر ورفع كفاءة أعضاء النيابة العامة بكافة دولنا وإننا نؤكد على أن مكافحة كافة الظواهر الإجرامية سيما المستحدث منها لا يتحقق إلا من خلال التعاون والتنسيق بين الأجهزة المختلفة داخل الدولة الواحدة وكذلك من خلال العمل على دعم التعاون القضائي والقانوني بين الدول خاصة تلك التي يجمعها رابط إقليمي وتاريخي قوي وعتيد وهو ما يجمعنا كدول تنتمي إلى قارتنا الإفريقية فتتماثل مشاكلنا وتبرز الحلول المشتركة القائمة على التفاهم والمصلحة الواحدة سبيلا لنجاحنا ووسيلة لدعم وتقوية علاقاتنا إنما هذه هي الرؤية والمنطلق الذي وضعته جمعية النواب العموم الأفارقة برئاسة جمهورية مصر العربية صوب أعينها وجعلتها منهجا لها فهي تدعم كافة الدول الأعضاء على تقوية الروابط الصلة والتواصل فيما بينها والتأكيد على أهمية تبادل الخبرات بين أعضاء النيابة العامة الأفارقة مع إبراز أهمية وفاعلية التدريبات وورش العمل الإقليمية المشتركة بينها ولا يسعنا في هذا المقام إلا أن نسمن جهود الجمعية الدولية لأعضاء النيابة العامة وجمعية النبوء لأعضاء الجم... الجمعية الدولية لأعضاء النيابة العامة وجمعية النواب العموم لدول شرق أفريقيا في هذا الشأن اللذين يبذلون جهود عظيمة في مختلف المجالات وختاما أود أن أعرب عن سعادتي بالمشاركة في هذا المؤتمر وأؤكد لكم على تطلعنا لمزيد من التعاون الفعال والتنسيق المستمر بين كافة أعضاء النيابة العامة في الدول المشاركة ولا يسعني إلا أن أشكر مرة أخرى كافة الجهود المبذولة لتنظيم هذا المؤتمر كي يلقي الضوء على أهم سبل مكافحة الظواهر الإجرامية المستحدثة وتبادل الخبرات والممارسات الفضلة بشأنها وذلك وصولا لتحقيق الأهداف التي تسعى إلى تحقيقها النيابة العامة وجهات إنفاذ القانون في دولنا من مكافحة الجريمة بكافة صورها شكرا جزيلا سيادة النائب Thank you very much, Honorable. Um, I will now invite um, Mr. Twalib Barak, uh, who is the CEO of Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission of Kenya, uh, to also come and say a few words. Uh, I, I think uh, he's the one who is the best dressed amongst us all. Thank you. Having come from uh, from here, and having misled him, <laughs> I think is not uh, an indirect way of telling me that I'm the most improperly dressed <laughs> in an ocean of suits and an island of a casual dress. Uh, distinguished guests, uh, the cabinet secretary, who is our chief guest, the director of public prosecution the Court of Appeal Judge, uh, Honorable uh, Justice Cairo, the Solicitor General, Mr. Ken Ogeto, uh, the Honorable Directors, the DPP Mauritius, Honorable uh, Dugiangu Makitao. I'm speaking in Swahili because I know he's from Tanzania. Uh, 
development partners, prosecutors, members of the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Bonjour tout le monde. Mouri Bwanji. Salamu alaikum sabal khair. Uh, let me take this opportunity, first of all, to thank the DPP, uh, Mr. Nurdin Haji, for inviting us uh, uh, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption -Corru uh, Commission of Kenya. We are one of his biggest clients. I think he cannot afford to do without inviting me, but he's a very, very good partner. And uh, as a commission, we are the lead agency mandated to combat corruption in Kenya through law enforcement, prevention, economic, I mean, uh, public awareness, and the enforcement of public ethics. Notably, the theme of this conference is uh, effective mechanism to respond to emerging crimes and transitional, uh, transnational organized crime in Africa. It's a wide-ranging topic and relevant to the challenges that we are currently facing as a commission in fighting graft, which many times transcend our national border. Indeed, we have to agree that corruption is a security threat, especially to the developing countries. And uh, the reality is that the regional and international cooperation is now an essential way and component in the fight against corruption. And actually, this entails investigations, prosecution, and uh, asset tracing and asset recovery of uh, illegally acquired assets. It is a matter that we must all roll up our sleeves and get involved in it without any fear. And I'm certain that in the course of the conference, we shall share the challenges encountered in our daily work while seeking cooperation across the borders and also look at some successes which other prosecutors can learn from. Here in Kenya, some of the mechanisms adopted to respond to emerging and transnational crime include the signing of bilateral agreement with other countries in order to facilitate the return of stolen and corruptly acquired assets hidden in other jurisdictions. Secondly, we are looking at strengthening regional and international cooperation through membership to organizations organization such as the International Association of Prosecutor for the ODPP and International Association of Anti-Corruption Authority, that is IACA for the ESCC. The overall objective here is to build strategic linkage for information sharing and expeditions processing of the MLA. Then we look at the automation of uh, government services, such as uh, immigration services, to reduce human interface and opportunity for corruption. If the migration can now have an integrated global system of tracing human movement, why can't we have the same on uh, other aspects so that we are able to contain corruption globally with at ease? The issue of uh, physical theft of public resources is now gone because we are having, everything is getting automated. 10 years ago or 15 years ago, we did not have a vocabulary called cryptocurrency. We did not, we did not have a, a word called Bitcoin. So more new terms are coming as a result of the automation of, of the world. Today, thieves I remember when I was a young man, you would uh, sometimes read that uh, in New York City, you have uh, people who have invaded a bank and get away with bundles and bundles of dollars. In today's world, the thief is not cutting grill or using a pistol. The thieves are in their comfort zone, taking tea and using maybe even a smartphone to commit, uh, to commit a very damaging sort of crime without anybody seeing it physically. So the initiative that we need should yield proper results both at local, regional, and global level. We have no doubt that uh, the outcome of this conference will enrich our regional determination to effectively respond to emerging crimes and move away from the traditional way of addressing crime in the world. As I conclude, I once again welcome you to Mombasa. This is my home city. I am from this area. And I wish you a very successful conference. And I trust that 
after the conference, maybe you'll plan again to come privately so that uh, you can enjoy the real aroma of this town. Because, you know, when you come to official visit, everything becomes extremely formal. You have to be in a suit, a tie, <laughs> where, whereby the weather here is hot and humid. So we hope that next time you'll come here well-dressed for this occasion, <laughs> informally as a tourist, because right now I know you are formally in, uh, at work. Shukran, thank you very much. Uh, Ziko Mokwambiri, and uh, merci beaucoup. Uh, thank you, um, Major Retired Tolly Mbarak. Um, maybe you should have added with a bald head. <laughs> make you cooler. <laughs> um, I now want to invite um, uh, Mr. Kennedy Ogeto, who is the Solicitor General from the Office of the Attorney General of the Republic of Kenya. Um, I think the Attorney General uh, was indisposed and uh, unwell, but uh, he will be representing him. Thank you. Um, allow me to skip the protocols, but uh, just to acknowledge all those who have been mentioned. I'm here to represent the Honorable the Attorney General of the Republic of Kenya, Mr. Kihara Karioki, who, as my colleague has stated, is unwell and could not be able to be here. And just to note that uh, I'm competing with my colleague here and good friend in dress code. I'm probably the second best uh, dressed in the room this morning. So allow me to read the Honorable the Attorney General's uh, remarks. I'm trying to be technologically savvy. I am pleased to join you today and to deliver remarks on behalf of the Honorable the Attorney General of the Republic of Kenya. The theme of this conference is arguably one of the most critical contemporary issues in criminal justice and law enforcement. There have been tremendous changes in the way that we live as individuals and as societies and nations, technology and globalization have played a significant role in this regard. However, these developments have also had their negative consequences. And one of these negative consequences has been that criminals have found new ways of committing and masking their crimes. Traditional forms of law enforcement have also encountered new challenges, some of which have made it difficult to bring criminals to account. This conference provides us with the opportunity to consider these dynamics and to ventilate on the mechanisms by which we can ensure that we remain steps ahead of the criminal mind. We therefore must adopt our systems, strategies, and tactics to these new realities if we are able, if we are to be able to effectively combat crime. Technology has increased the prevalence of electronic and internet-based crimes. It has made it possible for criminals to expand their reach far and wide, often beyond national and regional borders. An article in the Forbes magazine in March 2022 aptly 
describes computers and networking as follows, quote, the lawless continent on which criminals go wherever they want, going into factories, stores and homes, stealing data in massive amounts to sell and use to enable more crime, end of quote. Such access and wide reach have not just made it possible for criminals to reach far and wide, they have facilitated the commission of secondary cover-up crimes such as terrorism financing and terrorism itself. Cryptocurrency platforms, for instance, have made it easier for criminals to send and receive money almost instantly and anonymously. This is why we must adapt our law enforcement and criminal justice systems to make them effective and efficient. There are certainly uh, lessons to be learned, not just from other agencies within the same country, but also from regional and international best practices. Indeed, many of these crimes are no longer just a domestic concern. They have morphed into regional and international menaces that must be faced with concerted regional and international effort. This conference, therefore, provides us with the platform to share knowledge on these matters. A crucial way of staying ahead of the criminal is ensuring that we have the appropriate laws that define the crimes and define jurisdiction over such crimes. In many jurisdictions, the challenge has been that the law has not always been developed as fast as some of the new crimes have emerged, allowing criminals a gap to exploit. We therefore need to have such laws. Given the supranational nature of some of the emerging crimes, we need to rethink the laws on jurisdiction in many of our countries. There is probably greater incentive than ever before to think beyond territoriality and more about cross-border coordination in combating some of these crimes. We also need to strengthen our mutual legal assistance and cooperation frameworks. This will ensure that criminals do not hide within our boundaries and escape accountability for their crimes. It will ensure that justice is served in jurisdictions where it is best suited for example, on account of the location of the victims and the evidence. All these proposals will not be of use if we do not build our human resource capacities. There is need to train our law enforcement agencies and our judges and prosecutors on these emerging crimes. The complexity of these crimes is often as a result of the novelty and highly technical nature of how they are committed. We therefore must ensure that our criminal justice system is equipped with the skills, knowledge, and expertise to combat these crimes. It is my sincere belief, ladies and gentlemen, that this conference will be productive and that we will leave this venue having shared and learned from each other's experiences. What we derive from this conference should provide us with the incentive to forge ahead with efficient law enforcement approaches that respond to the current and emerging challenges. Thank you very much and I wish you very good deliberations. Uh, thank you, SG. Um, our Morocco representative uh, finds uh, the word DPP very funny. Maybe you have to put on that. <laughs> I'm saying you find the word DPP very funny. So I think it sounds, I don't know, like wee 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 in, 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 in French. <laughs> um, she was laughing the whole of last night, DPP. <laughs> so this, this is the Solicitor General, SG. Um, I, I now want to invite uh, Honorable Justice Mr. Stephen, Stephen Gatembu Cairo, who is uh, Judge of the Court of Appeal, 
uh, and, and um, is representing the Chief Justice today. The Chief Justice will be joining us tomorrow. Uh, please welcome. So. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Director. Uh, our host, uh, Director of Public Prosecution, Mr. Nujin uh, Haji, uh, Cabinet Secretary, uh, National Treasury and Planning, Mr. Atani, uh, Solicitor General, Mr. Ogeto, uh, CEO Ethics and Anti-Corruption uh, Commission, uh, Mr. Barak, uh, Mr. Theuri, President Law Society, uh, let me otherwise adopt the protocols that uh, the director uh, gave at the onset. And, and kindly give me some latitude because uh, I was sent here by the Honorable Chief Justice. Uh, I was not mandated at all to abridge uh, her speech. So please uh, bear with me uh, as I read and I'll try and do that uh, fairly fast. As the director has indicated, uh, I represent the Honorable Lady Justice Martha uh, Kome the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya and the President of the Supreme Court who could not be here uh, with you today. So I will read uh, the speech and here it is. Let me start by thanking the Director of Public Prosecutions, Mr. Nurjin Hadi, for the honor of inviting me to participate in this conference. The institutions and actors in the Kenyan justice sector working under the auspices of the National Council on the Administration of Justice, have embraced principled cooperation and collaboration to ensure the efficiency of the criminal justice sector. This spirit of collaboration respects the institutional independence of each agency, whilst also appreciating to achieve the common goal and desire of an efficient, effective, and rights-based criminal justice system requires adoption of a systematic approach that reforms the whole justice chain. It is such a collaborative approach that fosters coordination and cooperation amongst investigative and prosecution agencies in our region and globally that can enable us deal effectively with the phenomena of emerging crimes and transnational organized crimes that are the focus of this conference. Ladies and gentlemen, Throughout the world, crime poses serious problems that challenge the overall functioning of democratic societies or those transitioning towards democracy like most of the states in our region. This threat posed by crime to our states and societies has now heightened in the contemporary world. Globalization and the emergence of increasingly complex crimes partly fueled by advances in technology has increasingly brought to the fore the need for cross-national cooperation in the criminal justice sector. Policing agencies, prosecution bodies, and courts are expected to, cut, to tackle and effectively deal with mutating and complex crimes that include money laundering, terrorist activities, illicit arms trafficking, aircraft hijacking, maritime piracy, insurance fraud, computer crime, environmental crime, trafficking in persons, trade in human body parts, illegal drug trafficking, fraudulent bankruptcy, and the corruption and bribery of public or party officials, amongst others. To effectively tackle these crimes requires cooperation and collaboration that transcends the boundary of any country. It is important to add that while these crimes are not entirely new, what has changed is the scale of these activities, thanks in no small part the easing of the processes of transnational transactions, as well as the free movement of goods, information, and people. This tells us that the transnational organized crime remains a growth industry with future opportunities emerging each, with each new breakthrough in technology, communication, and transportation. In such a context, where we expect these crimes to continue mutating in character and grow in sophistication, we have no choice but to embrace cross-national approaches to tackle them effectively. This means that we should join forces and cooperate to effectively investigate, arrest, prosecute, adjudicate, and punish criminals engaged in the transnational organized crime. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I see a forum such as this conference with representation from prosecution agencies from around the continent as an avenue for spirited conversations and sharing of ideas geared towards catalyzing the fight against emerging and transnational organized crimes. This is so because this conference provides a platform to learn from the experience of others. Sharing of experiences by prosecution agencies is an excellent vehicle for learning how the criminal justice system in other states have been able to embrace innovative interventions to improve the effectiveness of their criminal justice systems. I am sure each of the prosecution agencies represented in this forum will learn something from sister agencies to enable them to engage in internal critique on what ideas and interventions to borrow to forge a better working criminal justice system. In addition, the sharing of experiences and, and perspectives is even more relevant in the context of combating transnational organized crimes, given that to effectively combat this kind of crime demands coordination or resources in multiple jurisdictions in different criminal justice systems across boundaries. Thus, the contemporary world of criminal justice demands that to serve justice well, whether it is for crimes within our borders or in another part of the world, international cooperation must be an essential ingredient, must be an essential ingredient. Without international cooperation, we cannot find, extradict, or serve justice on those who violate laws throughout the world. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, my hope is that we will see and approach this conference as a platform for sharing of ideas and interventions geared towards reconceptualizing and re-engineering our approaches to prosecution across the continent that enables us to work collaboratively and in a coordinated manner to improve on the efficiency of the justice system and the quality of justice that we deliver. Thank you and I wish you fruitful deliberations during the conference and a pleasant stay in Kenya. Honorable Justice Martha Kome, Chief Justice and the President of the Supreme Court of Kenya. So thank you very much. And I hope the director will not chase me away from the, from the venue because I intend to learn from all these deliberations. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> we are happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now we are about to conclude uh, the program. Um, but before I call uh, the vice president, uh, Mr. Bolel, I will call upon the IEP secretary general, Mr. Hendrik Jan. Just come and say a few words. You're the Secretary General. <laughs> I know I caught you unaware, sorry. <laughs> Just a few words. Nakusalamu. <laughs> Sal Salimo, Salimo, I, I should say. Naku Salimo. Thank you so much, but that's the only word of Swahili I know. I apologize uh, for that because your language is very beautiful. So I have to do it in English, and the only thing I want to say is that on behalf of the International Association of Prosecutors, I am so happy that you are here. And I am so proud that the DPP of Kenya and the Office of the Prosecutor General here in Kenya dare to organize with the International Association of Prosecutors this first event after two years of corona. You might know that the International Association of Prosecutors is a network of uh, individual members, of organizational members, prosecution services, associations of prosecutors, all working together on sharing knowledge, sharing training. We are a network for prosecutors finding each other when they want to work on uh, mutual legal assistance. And the third pillar of the IEP is keeping up the standards of fair and independent uh, prosecutions. And the only way to do that properly is in meeting each other, in being a network. So the two years behind us uh, of corona was really a hardship for the IEP. And we are so happy 
that this is the first event after Corona is slowly fading away and that we can meet you all in person and I hope you have the same feeling in meeting each other in person because that's the best way to trust each other, to know each other and to build on future cooperation. And I thank the host of this uh, uh, conference, Nordi Haji, and his team for organizing this, daring to do this with the International Association of Prosecutors. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Um, I will now call upon Honorable Setyajit Bolel, Director of Public Prosecutions, Mauritius, and the IAP Vice President, Africa, Indian Ocean Region. Welcome. So, good morning. The Honorable Yuko Yatani, Cabinet Secretary, Your Lordship, Honorable Justice uh, Stephen, Cairo, Judge of the Court of Appeal, the DPP of Kenya, Nordin Haji, uh, the President of the EAAP, Honorable uh, Sylvester Anthony, uh, and uh, uh, Honorable Twalip Mbarak, from the head of the uh, Anti-Corruption Agency, the Secretary General of the IAP, Mr. Han Moral, and uh, Head of Prosecution Agencies, all protocols observed, uh, um, <coughs> so a very good morning to all of you. Now, <coughs> as the Secretary General just mentioned, it is a great relief that we can interact after two years of lockdown uh, face to face. And let me start by, first of all, thanking uh, my good friend, Nordin for not only organizing this conference uh, with his dedicated team, but also for taking very prompt action. And I want to thank also the government of Kenya and the people of Kenya for this tremendous welcome. And uh, we are very touched by this uh, gesture in, in the region. Now, <coughs> the, the law without proper enforcement is just good advice. This is what Abraham Lincoln once said. So it could not have been a better choice of theme to, for this conference to find, uh, to, to discuss on the question of uh, the uh, effective mechanism to respond to uh, organized crime and emerging crimes. We know that the goalpost is constantly moving. We also know that uh, there are emerging crimes which law enforcement agencies cannot uh, keep pace with organized crime. Uh, we, also, uh, we also know that what has happened in the late 80s is that a change of strategy, a paradigm shift, so that we can uh, hurt the, the perpetrator of, of crime where it hurts most, that is the proceeds of the crime, his pocket. And we know that incarceration has not given us the kind of full uh, deterrent satisfaction that uh, we experience as uh, uh, prosecution, prosecution agencies. So perhaps in order to, in order to decide on, uh, in order to decide what is best effective respond, what is the best effective mechanisms, I consider that we must identify where our weaknesses are. And I identify three weaknesses. One is the lack of transparency. The second one is the lack of cooperation. And all those who have spoken before me have clearly identified the need, the urgent need for cooperation. And third is the lack of resources, lack of funding, lack of specialists and expertise in the area where we have to uh, investigate and prosecute. So look, in, uh, I, I perhaps will share the experience of uh, my own jurisdiction when we look at 
this lack of transparency. The, you will see that the, the real culprit, the hide behind intermediaries through a series of layers of screen, and they are difficult to reach. So, and I know the Financial Action Task Force is, is, is uh, strongly recommending that we must have a company register where not only we, we find the, the, who are the beneficial owners of, those, uh, of, of this money, uh, which is being in the process of being laundered, so there must be total transparency uh, in that area. And uh, we, we also know that uh, the, the recommendations now with countries coming with a list of a legal arsenal of laws is to have access to such information in a timely fashion. The second problem is lack of cooperation. We've just heard the uh, Secretary General Morales speaking about the IAP. The IAP is a worldwide organization of prosecutors. It's a, it's a platform that, that really creates a very dynamic, a crucial, a vital network for us prosecutors, not only to share familiar problems, to share expert knowledge, but also to be able to learn how to collaborate across jurisdictions, learn skills, techniques, specialist, uh, specialist knowledge, and it can only be of huge benefit. I would urge you, you must excuse me, I have had some medicine and my, <laughs> I'm having a very dry throat here. So uh, you, you, I must urge you to go to the, to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, the, the website of the IAP. Go to the website and see how much uh, you can learn from, even uh, in cybercrime. You know, today, internet has become accessible to all. To all, everyone in, in Africa, people are using their phone to make payments. And they are not that literate in technology. And what is happening? The massive scam. Massive scam that are coming up front to, to steal the money of these people. And they don't understand how or why they are losing, they, they, they're being victims of scams. And we also know that in many of these cases, enforcement is literally uh, nil. So information sharing, cooperation uh, are very important. And the third area of uh, difficulties uh, is the fact that of the lack of funding, lack of specialist knowledge, lack of uh, technical expertise, and the, the thing is, technology is moving so fast. We are now facing cryptocurrency as a mode to do anti-money laundering. And yet, with uh, borders that percolate throughout, uh, it is difficult to, to enforce the law, even though we have brought forward the, an arsenal of legislation. So I, the solution, I think, the advice in my experience is that we must learn to cooperate, cooperate, cooperate. In Africa, we have, and I hope the UNODC can be instrumental for that, in Africa to create a kind of Africa just. Europe has given a very good example of how joint prosecutors and investigators can work together. So we should be doing the same because it's a, it's a, it's a system that is proving its effectiveness. That's a cooperation we can all meet uh, regionally, globally, across Africa, and this has to be done. This is, I think, the first urgent thing. We can also work with, uh, uh, with an Africa uh, poll, with the police getting together, and I think those are things which we should be looking forward to discuss and deliberate in the two days that we'll have to share our experiences. So I'm going to stop here. Let me once again thank uh, Nordin for uh, organizing such a nice conference. Uh, perhaps next time we'll be sitting on the beach with our shorts and discussing very serious issues. But thank you very much for your attention.
thank you, DPP. Um, so, um, just before I call upon our guest, uh, ch chief guest, and key, who will deliver the keynote address uh, for his benefit, I just want to try and recognize uh, the different individuals and countries that are here today. Um, Honorable CS, we have representatives from Burundi, and it is headed by the Deputy Prosecutor General, who is Mr. Nkiza Bahizi Franco. I hope I pronounced it rightly. We also have a delegation from the Democratic Republic of Congo that is represented by the Prosecutor General, uh, Mr. Victor Mumba Mukomo. We, have, we also have in our presence uh, representatives from Mozambique, headed by Dr. Alberto Paolo, who is the Vice Attorney General. We also have representatives from our neighboring country, um, Tanzania, but Zanzibar, stroke Zanzibar, headed by Mrs. Salma Ali Hassan, who is the DPP and Head of Delegation, and a former classmate. Um, we have representatives from the IAP Executive Committee, headed by Mr. Hendrik Jan Moral, who is the Secretary General. We have representatives coming from the Seychelles, Mr. Frank Ali, uh, who is the Attorney General of Seychelles. We have representatives from Zambia, headed by uh, Humbiza Thelma Mumba, uh, who is the Chief State Advocate. Uh, of course, from Tanzania, we have Mr. Mwakitalo Sylvester Anthony, who is the DPP, the head de de delegation of Tanzania. Uh, we have Honorable Chol Deng Adija, who is the DPP of South Sudan, and head, de head of the de delegation of South Sudan. We have a representative from Namibia, headed by the Chief Legal Officer, Ian Mwinga. Malumani. We have uh, representatives from Rwanda, headed by my brother Amibel, who is a prosecutor general of, of Rwanda. I have my sister from Uganda, Honorable Abodo Jen Francine, who is the DPP of Uganda. Of course, we have Mr. Satjit Bolel from Mauritius, who is the DPP of Mauritius. We have representatives from Ethiopia, headed by Mr. Yesuf Saidi, who is the Director of International Cooperation um, at the Office of the Attorney General. Uh, we have uh, representatives from Egypt. Uh, we have Mr. George Saad Salib, who is the Deputy Prosecutor General. Uh, we have a representative from Guinea-Bissau, Martin Domingos, who is the president of the Union of Magistrates of the Public Ministry of Guinea-Bissau. We have uh, represent representatives from Ghana, headed by the Honorable Attorney General, who is about to arrive, Mr. Dem Godfred Yaboa, who is accompanied by uh, Madam Atakura, Obu Bisa, who is the DPP of Ghana. We have representatives from Zimbabwe, um, headed by Rose Takuva. We have um, representatives from Sudan, um, headed by His Excellency Khalif Ahmed Khalif Ahmed, who is the Attorney General of Sudan. We have a representative from Botswana, Mr. Wesson Gape Manchu, Manchiwe. I hope I pronounced it right, who is the Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions, Botswana. We have a representative from Somalia, Mohamed A. Mohamed, who is an advisor to the Attorney General of Somalia. We have a representative from South Africa, Mr. Simbongile Nzinyathi, who is a Special Director of Public Prosecutions and represents the Director of Public Prosecutions, South Africa. We have Dr. Stephen Kayuni, who is the DPP of Malawi, uh, representing Malawi. We have uh, Madam Jamila Siddiq, 
who is a representative of Morocco and is an advisor to the Office of the Attorney General and President of the Public Ministry of Morocco. Uh, we have Mr. Abu Bakar Mohamed Babadoko, who is the Federal Director of Public Prosecutions, Nigeria. We also have a number of other guests from the United States of America. We have guests from Saudi Arabia. We have um, individual guests from R Romania. Um, we have guests also um, from the US and the United Kingdom. Uh, we have individuals from several organizations, the UNODC, the British High Commission, INL, AGA, UNODC, USDOJ, AMLTBH, IGA, IJM, but we also have representatives from the EAAP, which is the East African Association of Prosecution, and the AAP, the African Association of Prosecutions, and IAP. At the International Association of Prosecutions. I now have the singular honor to invite Honorable Ukuri Atani, Cabinet Secretary, National Treasury and Planning, and also a very close family friend um, and mentor. Welcome, sir. Honorable Makitalu, Honorable Satya Jit, Honorable Justice Kairu, my friend Twali Barak, the Solicitor General, Honorable Directors of Public Prosecution, Distinguished Development Partners present here, regional and international delegates, Nurin, the Director of Public Prosecution Kenya, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. I, I want to believe we are still in the morning session. <laughs> I, I am glad and privileged to, to join you at this very important forum, the International Association of Prosecutors, Fourth Regional Conference of Africa and the Indian Ocean, the first ever to be held in East Africa alongside the East African Association of Prosecutors Extraordinary General Meeting. I think this is, is very significant. That being the first conference in this region, it gives us immense opportunity to reflect back and see the journey we've traveled in as far as criminal justice systems concerned. I know as a cabinet secretary treasury, Sometimes very difficult to get time out of the routines. But the fact I'm here is basically for three reasons. One, having closely worked with Nordin and his team for the last three years, I have seen immense transformation of that organization. From being, you know, an organization that is either opaque or unknown to many Kenyans to a very open system where the public have now confidence to interact with them at will and to also look forward to engaging them. I have seen, but also of course, of my relationship with Nordin, I happen to have quite a bit of insight of the development journey they have traveled and the vision they have and that we've been close partners in ensuring that their dreams come true. I also had an opportunity to represent this country as a permanent representative to Vienna. And I closely worked with UNODC. And therefore, some kind of reflection and remembrance of my time in Vienna 12 years ago. And that's why I said I wouldn't miss this occasion. And I said I must be here to share and also uh, learn, and hopefully also meet one or two persons that I have met in Vienna. But it doesn't appear to be the case, it appears. I acknowledge 
the presence of many prosecution authority heads, the prosecutors, criminal justice practitioners, and experts from across Africa, and the world present here today. Allow me to also take this opportunity to welcome you to Kenya, for those who have been here before, or you are being here for the first time, and to the coastal city of Mombasa. Mombasa is our, is our tourist resort. And many times we say, once you are here, the eye to come back as many times as possible is quite compelling. So you come here, we look forward to seeing you once again. The objective of this week's conference is based on effective mechanism for responding to emerging crimes and transnational organized crimes in Africa, which best reflects our international commitments to combating emerging and transnational, transnational organized crimes. The conference comes at a critical time for African countries. As the threat we face from emerging and transnational organized crime is evolving. And that's why clearly we need to be ahead of the game. The fact that this conference is quite timely because sharing experience and lessons from our respective jurisdictions will give us a better and common strategy to stay ahead of the game. Indeed, some of our respective jurisdictions have experienced firsthand the negative impact that transnational organized crimes, such as terrorism and corruption, have on our economy, security, peace, and stability. I think most of us in the region have experienced or continue to experience to a great extent the adverse effect of terrorism, terrorism and corruption, which distorts resources and denies the public the opportunity to get better service delivery when the public is actually paying for it. This is a very important moment that we need to now share those lessons and see how best we can deal with them. Transnational criminal networks often constitute a direct threat to our economies by subverting and undermining our legal systems and the rule of law. To a great extent, from time to time, we are being told significant amount of public resources are directed to activities that undermine the state itself. You fund it from your own resources to undermine your institutions. And that's why it's really important that we share and learn from each other. While globalization has enhanced our regional and international interconnectivity and independence, interdependence, it has also increased the prevalence of cross-border criminal enterprises and criminal activities. Anything that has the positive side can actually also be exploited to undermine the same system. And that's why globalization despite making life easier and making movement of people, services, and goods, also has a potential to transfer activity, criminal activities from one jurisdiction to the other. That's why in the coming years, unless we develop strategies to tackle emerging transnational crimes, we are likely to see this figure rise at the expense of our social and economic development. As a region, we need to adopt bilateral and multilateral agreements, and more so fast enough, with the common objective of investigating and prosecuting emerging transnational crimes. So that collectively we are safer. Because sometimes you can guard yourself with all the walls, thinking that you are safer. But unless the environment, your neighborhood, equally ap applies the same skills, it is very far, you are unlikely to get that in your security. So a collective approach in terms of managing even the movement of this crime and criminal activities uh, is quite important that we have a joint and a common approach. As a reflection of Kenya's commitment to bolster expertise knowledge in the identification and prevention of criminal activity, we have continuously enhanced our budgetary allocation to criminal justice agencies like the ODPP 
And I'm happy when opening the first session, uh, uh, Deputy Dorcas mentioned that, you know, the journey that this organization has traveled the last few years in terms of crafting that level of independence so that they can be masters of their own, you know, uh, dream rather than being curtailed and restricted by the inability or the access to financial resources because the resource uh, plays a key role in transformation of an organization. This has allowed for the establishment of the ODPP Prosecution Training Institute, which provides continuous training for prosecutors and other criminal justice actors. The Institute further serves as an institution for legal development and resource a key element for the reform and improvement of our prosecutorial practices within the South African region at large. I am sure the Institute will greatly benefit the region by also sharing all those uh, required information and reference for future development. I recognize that the ODPP has focused on digitizing their processes through the development and operationalization of an automated case management system to enhance efficiency and contribute to the expeditious disposal of cases. I think the role of ICT digitization cannot be overemphasized because it's an integral part of any activity that we gear to a success. The ODPP's focus on technology is further complemented by enhanced data collection efforts which facilitates the identification of crime trends and hotspot regions, leading to more responsive and cohesive policies in our country and the region. Ladies and gentlemen, while we may be doing our best nationally to combat transnational and emerging crimes, I don't think it's really enough. As mentioned, these crimes are no longer confined to our borders. They are no longer confined to specific localities because our borders are highly porous and people are already ahead, always ahead of the government because that's why research remains very important. We must be ahead of this, uh, this uh, segment of the population. Within the South African community, <coughs> Harmonization of laws surrounding illicit financial flows has so far culminated in the surrender of CS gold to Tanzania. It's envisioned that these legislative changes will facilitate the continuous exchange of best practices to enhance capacity building of various thematic prosecutorial areas. These measures, which bring together government agencies and the financial sector, will enhance the East African regional strategy for combating money laundering, countering terrorist financing, and countering proliferation financing. Additionally, as the South African region, we have, further, we have furthered our commitment to enhancing regional cooperation on areas like asset recovery for membership in the Asset Recovery Interagency Network for East Africa, the Asset Recovery Interagency Network for Southern Africa, and the Eastern and Southern Africa Anti-Money Laundering Group. As I conclude, I sincerely thank the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution, the African and Indian Ocean Prosecutors, and the East African Association of Africa for graciously hosting this conference that unites criminal justice practitioners and, and prosecutors from across the world towards finding effective means of combating emerging and transnational organized crimes. I think I just want to continue challenging ODPP to stay on course with the transformation of the organization as they have embarked on for the last few years. Because as clearly indicated by speakers before me, the challenges are ahead are evolving and becoming more complicated every other day. We must stay ahead of, the, of this rather than having, uh, being vulnerable in a situation that we are not able to uh, help. 
for those coming to Mombasa and maybe Kenya for the first time, I urge you to, if you get an opportunity, because you hardly get this kind of chance, once you are here, try also to see our region. Because it's very important. Uh, because your personal pleasure is also sometimes quite significant. Take a bit of time, see our city, with a view of coming back another time. I also want to state here that the economy of any country is quite dependent on a number of things. We may have the necessary ingredients of those sectoral issues, but unless we have a system that is transparent, a system that is accountable, a system that empowers the people, then, you know, uh, the whole essence will be lost. I want to thank you very much. Uh, and I wish you a fruitful uh, deliberation. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Honorable CS. Yes. Um, I think this brings us to the end of this session. But before we go for a break, I have um, two small announcements. Um, first of all, there are some countries that I didn't mention. We have representatives from Saudi Arabia. We have representative, a representative from Brazil, Pakistan, Romania, Serbia, and Sierra Leone. Uh, we also have within us, um, amongst us, sorry, Captain Retired Saitoti, who is the Kenyan, who is the director of the Kenyan um, Financial Resource uh, Center. Um, the two announcements is that um, tomorrow, uh, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, will be joining us around 10, I think, but we will give you the program. Um, secondly, uh, after this, uh, we will have a photo session um, somewhere outside uh, where there's a banner. Uh, and we will probably have 20 minutes uh, tea break and then come back for the next session. So thank you very much. Sorry for the delay. We started a bit late, but we'll catch up with the time. Thank you. And welcome again. <laughs>